In 2007, High Plains Environmental Center worked with McWinney, the developer of Centera, BHA, a landscape architect firm, and Archaeological Services to create a document for designing and building stormwater ponds that replicate the ecological functions of a natural wetlands. And in order to demonstrate the principles of that document, we created this wetland ecology demonstration garden. And the idea is that the general public and even um, engineers working on building stormwater ponds might not um, intuitively grasp the idea that there are zones within a pond. Those, the zones are the aquatic zone that is actual open water, the wetland zone, which is an um, area of saturated soils, sub-irrigated, where there is moisture below the level of, of the soil, and the upland zone, which is a, a high and dry area. And we began to create this garden by drawing out the pattern on the ground and having an excavator come and dig the, uh, the pond. We wanted this to look like um, the, the kind of braided landform that you might see if you were looking down on the South Platte River from Google Earth. And we wanted this to be a, a, a plausible e ecological um, form called a second channel. It, it, it would look to the viewer as if this abandoned irrigation canal overflows periodically and has eroded this, this channel over a period of time. That actually doesn't happen, but it, it, it looks as if that, um, that is what would have created this landform. And we, we vegetated, we, we used the, the soil that we excavated and we, we created these, these hills here, the, these uh, berms. We, we set the topsoil aside and then we put the topsoil back on top of these hills and then added more um, peace stone gravel and, and more aggregate so that it would um, drain better. So this is the aquatic zone and it's actually ex excavated down to be in the water table of this um, reservoir that we're next to. And this is the area where you, you see open water. Um, basically, this is called a prairie pothole. And um, these are critical for wildlife out in the, the prairie. This tall plant you see here is uh, hard stem bulrush. And we have um, some alkali bulrush and tories rush and um, various wetland plants on the edge of it and uh, this is the place where in the in the spring when the water fills up we, we see a lot of toads that um, lay eggs in here and this is part of our wetland zone and before we started here there was an invasive non-native plant called reed canary grass which can can create a monoculture in wetlands and we, we killed off the grass and we, with um, a group of volunteers from the Brethren, Brethren Church, we planted 600 four inch plants that we grew in our nursery of the uh, nuttall sunflower and uh, various milkweeds and Canada goldenrod and uh, verbena hastata. So di different uh, flowering plants that you would see in a wetland. And uh, they've taken off incredibly well here. And all, all summer long, you'll see there's bees and butterflies coming and going from this garden. And um, you don't have to be a botanist to see that this is beautiful and it puts on an incredible display when it blooms in the, in the summer. And um, we think this has been very successful and added a lot of interest to the area. This is the up, upland zone, and this is characterized by 
well-drained soils, usually more um, gravel and rock, and you'll you'll see a lot more um, shrubs and woody plants in this in this zone. So in here we have some of the gamble oak and rabbit brush and um, honey, um, sand cherry, and a lot of um, flowering plants that we either grew from seed, some by casting the seed out here in, in the fall and just letting it come up on its own, and also a lot of plants that we dug up the adjacent uh, site where the apartments were built in, um, in 2009 and we held those plants over in our nursery and, and put them back here um, after we had this garden built. So we were able actually to do some salvage of native plants on an adjacent uh, construction site. The area where I'm sitting here was intended to be kind of a, a natural amphitheater and a place where um, visiting school classes and, and um, and other audiences would would be able to sit and listen to a talk about the garden, about um, ecology in general, and specifically our focus here is the relationship between native plants and the pollinators and um, the value that, that native plants have <laughs> in re restoring the natural environment. And a lot of these plants in here are labeled to help people be able to identify them so they can use them in their home gardens. And we are a plant select garden. So uh, plant select is a program that works with CSU, the Denver Botanic Garden, and the Colorado Nursery Men Association to promote plants that are suitable for high altitude um, gardens here in, in Colorado. Not all of the plant select plants are native, but we have chosen to only uh, showcase the, the plant select plants that are native to the Rocky Mountain West. This is our plant select demonstration garden and as I mentioned before we have chosen to only feature the plant select plants that are native to the Rocky Mountain West. So we have the Agastakes in here and the Pedra and um, um, Salvias and Penstemons and so on. And if you sat here for a while, you would see native bumblebees and hummingbirds and butterflies and goldfinches come and go from this garden all day long. It really has a tremendously beneficial impact on wildlife here. One of the things that I love to show kids about pollinators and native plants is um, the salvia flower has a mechanism that puts the uh, pollen on the um, on the pollinator and helps to the pollen to be carried to the next flowers and it, it's fascinating to watch so if this were the hummingbird and um, its beak going into the flower those little stamens come down and they put pollen on the um, on the hummingbird and then they retract and it goes back to the next flower and um, every time it goes to a new flower there's um, each one of these has those little stamens that come down like a snake bite and puts the pollen on the pollinator and then off it goes to the next flower The work that we do here wouldn't be possible without the help of our volunteers. Um, and a, an example of that is this viewing platform here in the garden was designed and built by volunteers from Intel in the fall of 2010. And um, they actually came up with the design on, on their own. And um, not only did they um, volunteer, but the company has a, a matching fund it goes along with volunteering, so at the end of their project, they turned in the hours and the, uh, the corporate headquarters gave us a donation as well. We have this picture of a small woman using a, a big auger for, for digging post holes, and um, she just has this great grin on her face, like she's having a, the, the greatest time 
drilling these holes and I, I don't even really get that response from people when I actually pay them so um, volunteering is a great exchange that it really helps us to uh, in include people in, in a hands-on experience of our mission and we get a lot done that way and it really helps we only have four people on staff so it really helps us to move forward with a lot of our projects. One of the things that we talked about when we were fundraising to build this garden is that it would be a benefit to wildlife because the native plants are, are critical for wildlife habitat. <clears throat> also, it would provide a breeding area for amphibians. And children who lived in the area would have the opportunity to connect with nature in this garden on a daily basis. So we were gratified the next year when um, when this started filling up with water in the spring that uh, <clears throat> we, we saw a lot of um, tadpoles from the woodhouse toads and, and uh, porous frogs here and um, just a tremendous amount of, of um, frogs and toads hatching out of there. And when I was putting up this sign we were going to have the, um, the board of directors of the High Plains Environmental Center come out here for a meeting and it was an official opening of this garden and I was hurrying to get this done and I had the, the extension cord was too short and I had the wrong drill bit and so on and it ended up being around 6 or 6.30 in the evening when I actually got the sign installed and it wasn't um, five minutes later that I saw two little girls over here on this dock and one said to the other one hey there's a new sign and, and they ran over to, to take a look at it and um, so that was but that was cool that they noticed and that they were excited about it. And then they were looking at the sign and I walked over very quietly and I just asked them, what do you think this sign is about? And uh, one of the girls looked at it and after a minute said, there's zones? <laughs> and that was perfect because that, that's exactly what we, we, we wanted people to, to get out of this.